Hmm, I wonder if the Red Sox are opening at home this year. Yes, against the Pirates. Why are fire engines red? Ah, because they have eight wheels and four people on them, and four plus eight makes 12, and they're 12 inches in foot, and one foot is a ruler, and Queen Elizabeth was a ruler, and Queen Elizabeth was also a ship, and the ships sailed the seas, and there were fish in the seas, and the fish have fins, and the fins fought the Russians, and the Russians are red, and fire trucks are always rushing around. So that's why fire trucks are red. Wow, Google sure is amazing, but how does it work? How does it know where to find all those answers? Stay tuned to find out. So Eric, just how big is Google? Well, Mark, if by how big you mean how much information does it contain? The last we know, Google told us that it knows about 130 trillion web pages. But I think that's just the ones that it's actually crawled and the real number is probably much higher. Wow, that's a lot. I mean, how does Google keep track of it all and deliver us results so fast? Well, it boils down to a three-step process, crawling, indexing, and ranking. Well, let's go through each of those one at a time. Okay. Well, first comes crawling. Search engines have web bots known as spiders that crawl the World Wide Web to discover web pages and what they're about in order to evaluate their usefulness for answering users' queries. Spiders move through the web via links, links from one web page to the next, and then down through the link structure of the site itself. Okay, so we're looking at a web page now. Now, in this case, the homepage of us.gov. Is this what the Google spider sees? Well, not exactly. The spider sees the rendered HTML and JavaScript code of a page known as the DOM, or do Document Object Model. And that's where it discovers the links to other parts of the site and to other sites that the page links to. All the links discovered are loaded into a queue for later crawling. So Google goes through all those crawlable links every day? Well, no. Uh, even for Google, that would be neither possible nor necessary. They actually spread each crawl over several weeks using a set of priorities. Priorities let them know that there are some pages that probably never need to be crawled, and some that need to be crawled less often than others. Okay, so our spiders have crawled the World Wide Web. Now what? Well, next comes the process of indexing. All that information collected by the spiders has to be placed into an index to make it useful for searches. The index for each page includes things like detailed data on the nature of the content, a topical relevance of each web page, and a map of all the pages that each page links to, and the clickable or anchor text of each link, and other pertinent information about each link, such as whether it's an ad or not, and where it is on the page, and more things like that. The index is the database with which search engines like Google store and retrieve data when a user types a query into the search engine. Before it decides which pages to show from the index and in which order, search engines apply these algorithms to help rank the web pages. And there's that word rank. Now, talk about how Google ranks the search results we see. Sure. Well, a lot goes into this step, and it has to happen in fractions of a second. First, Google has to interpret the intent of the searcher. Is she looking for information, looking to make a purchase, or in the case of voice search now, perhaps just asking a further question about the topic she previously asked about. Next, Google has to identify which pages in its index are relevant to the query and their degrees of relevancy. Finally, Google ranks and returns those pages in the order of importance and their relevance. Now, now you just said importance and relevance, but is there a distinguishing factor between those two? Sure. So let's take relevance first. Relevance is the degree to which any given web page matches the intent of the searcher. It's no small task to figure that out at a massive scale. Mm -hmm. And just so you're clear, uh, th there's degrees of relevance. So something can be highly relevant mm -hmm. or little relevant or you know, kind of in between. And importance has to do with how often a web page is cited by other pages and to some degree with how relative and important those citing pages are. Typically, that citation comes in the form of a link, but it can come in other ways. Okay, let's make this practical. What does all that mean for someone trying to do SEO, someone trying to help their site rank higher in Google for the queries that are important to them? I think it means the same two things that are important to Google in ranking, relevance and importance. 
need to be important to the SEO. As an SEO, you should be asking yourself about any page. How relevant is the content on this page to what my target visitor would be looking for? And what have I done to make it a good enough and useful enough experience that other sites will want to link to it and cite its importance? And of course, wrapped up in that simple sounding explanation is all the complexity and artistry that comes into what a truly good SEO puts into his or her work. Yes. So of course, there's really a lot more to it, such as understanding how a search engine views, understands, and evaluates your content. So which you go into at great depth in your guide to the how Google search results work on our blog. Now our viewers can read that at the link on their screen now. Now if you'll excuse me, Mark, I've got some important research to do on Google myself. And that means I've got work to do. Okay, Google, which is the greatest baseball team of all time? What? It's not the Boston Red Sox? Why, you little 